Number one, you must be able to recognize that an electrical circuit consisting of an energy source, which is a battery, and other circuit components, wire, bulb, switch, forms an electrical system. Okay, you must be able to recognize that an electrical circuit consisting of the battery, other circuit components like the wire, bulb, switch, forms an electrical system. You must show an understanding that the current can only flow through a closed circuit. Current can only flow through a closed circuit. So what we mean by closed circuit? Again, we will discuss this very shortly. Here. So you must be able to identify electrical conductors and insulators. What we mean by conductors and insulators? Recognize that good conductors of electricity are generally good conductors of heat. Then you must be able to construct simple circuit from a circuit diagram. Eh? Okay, so you will learn basic or simple circuit diagrams for drawing purposes. And okay, these are very important. Okay, this part here. Investigate the effects of some variables on the current in a circuit and communicate its findings. Okay, in particular, in terms of the number of batteries. Okay, how increasing or decreasing number of batteries okay, affects the current. All right, here in your syllabus, you need to know uh, in series for number of batteries. For bulbs, number of bulbs, you must know the effect of the number of bulbs arranged in series and in parallel. Okay, so this is very important. Huh? All right, now let's start with a simple electrical circuit. What is a simple electrical circuit? So it is made up of electrical parts such as batteries and wire. So you can see here, battery here and wire. So if you have learned, the physics students, if you have learned on uh, about uh, energy, okay, you will know that battery is made up of chemical potential energy. right? So inside battery, it has chemical potential energy. Potential energy is also called stored energy. Okay, so when electrical parts in a closed electrical circuit are pro properly connected, the bulb in the circuit will light up. Okay, when it is properly connected, okay, the bulb will light up. This shows that the electric current is flowing through the circuit. Okay, when there is an uninterrupted flow of the electrical current, okay, the bulb will light up. But once there is a gap, all right, it is called an open circuit, so current cannot flow, so the bulb will not light up. And different parts of electrical of the circuit perform different functions. Okay, let's, okay, let's take off energy. Right? So this is now batteries come in different sizes, eh? and it has two terminals. One is the positive terminal, and the other one is the negative terminal. So you have to arrange the battery properly. Eh? The positive terminal must be connected to the negative terminal. All right, so if not, it will not light up. Eh? Now, wires. Wires help to connect two terminals of the battery to other electrical parts so electrical current can flow through the circuit. They are usually made of copper. So the wires must be good conductor of electricity. Now, bulb. Now, bulb is uh, interesting. Eh? You need to know what are the components of a bulb. All right. Now, a bulb, it has a metal casing and metal tip. So, metal casing here, this is the metal casing. And at the bottom here is the metal tip. So, what happened here? You have to connect the wires properly. Okay. So, the metal tip of the bulb are connected properly in circuit. And electrical current flows through the filament okay, in the bulb and the bulb will light up. All right. So, what happened here? Okay, let's say, all right, let's see. Okay, so this is a simple uh, electrical circuit. So you have battery here, and the wire must be connected to the metal tip, and then the other wire must be connected to the metal casing. All right, so what happened here? Inside the, the bulb, there is a wire that goes around here, okay, and then passing through the filament, and then it goes down, all right, and connected to the metal casing. So that is why you need to connect 
one end of the wire to the metal tip and the other end to the metal casing. Now, when the bulb blows or when the bulb, you know, uh, broken, so what happened here? There's a broken part at the filament here. Okay, so what I'll do is that I'll erase it. Okay, so when it is broken here, you can see that, okay, there is a gap, right? You can see that there's a gap. All right, once there's a gap, electrical circuit or current cannot flow through, so the bulb will not light up. Okay, so it becomes an open circuit. Now, electrical appliances have electrical system in them. Electrical system consists of at least one electrical circuit. So this, you can see that this is quite a complicated uh, circuit. A closed circuit. What do we mean by closed circuit? When a battery and a bulb are connected properly with wires and there are no gaps between the parts in the circuit, the bulbs will light up. And electrical current can flow through a closed circuit. So you can see here, there's no gap. And we call this a, a closed circuit. All right? A closed circuit. What about an open circuit? An open circuit is when the battery and the bulbs are not properly connected or when there is a gap between the parts in a circuit, the bulb will not light up. So we call this an open circuit. Okay, open circuit. Why? You can see here, there's a gap. Huh? There's a gap. So there, there will not be any continuous flow of current. So the bulb will not light up. Huh? Okay, so we call this an open circuit. Now, closing or opening a switch, we can control the electrical current flowing through a circuit by adding a switch. Now, a switch is very important, okay, to open or close an electrical system uh, or electrical circuit. Okay, when we close a switch, okay, this is a closed switch. Okay, electrical current flows in a complete path to light up the bulb. Okay, when we close the switch, so it forms a complete path to light up the bulb. When we open the switch, okay, you can see here there's a gap, right? When we open the switch, an open circuit is formed. So electrical current cannot flow in a complete path due to the gap in the circuit. Hence, the bulb does not light up, right? Now, next, electrical conductors. Electrical conductors allow electric current to flow through them. Example of electrical conductors, metals. Huh? Metals are very good electrical conductors, such as copper, steel. Okay, And electrical current can flow through a circuit because parts of the circuit are partly made of materials that are electrical conductors. Now, electricity cannot flow through electrical insulators. Okay. What are insulators? Electrical insulators do not allow electric current to flow through them. Uh, that is why, uh, you know, electrician they or you know or someone working in the factories they need to wear rubber boots or rubber shoes, eh? okay, where the soles are made of very thick rubber because rubber are insulators, right? Now rubber and plastic are electrical insulators. So you can see here this is the plug, and this part is metal. But this part here is made of plastic because plastic are insulators. You do not want anyone to be electrocuted because of you know uh, handling this the, this plug. Now, why is and plugs made of this material, which helps us to prevent from getting electrical shocks? Now, circuit diagrams. Uh, circuit diagrams. Uh. Now, circuit diagrams is a simplified way of drawing electrical. Uh, and electrical system uh, to represent electrical system. So symbols can be used. Okay, you can see here uh, this is uh, bulbs and you know battery and so on. Uh, to draw, uh, you know, on paper it is not easy because you know it takes up a lot of time. So if you are studying physics or engineering, okay, or you be an electrical engineer, you will learn a lot about you know constructing circuit diagrams. Okay, using symbols huh, to represent the different electrical parts. So you can see here, this is a bulb, and this is battery, and this is a switch. Okay, so battery, the symbol is this. Now this is plus, right? Plus here. This is also plus. Huh? The longer part here, it is plus, and this is the negative terminal, huh? positive terminal, and the, the negative terminal, right? 
And this is wire. Eh? The symbol for wire is just straight line. Eh? Just straight line. The bulb is represented by a circle okay, and a cross. A switch. Uh, this is an open switch. Right? This is an open switch. And a closed switch will be all right, it will be two holes and so this will be closed switch. Eh? Electrical diagram makes use of symbol to represent an electrical circuit. So you can see here this is an electrical diagram, a circuit diagram. All right. Now variables affecting electrical current. We can increase or decrease the brightness of a bulb in a circuit. Okay, so what affects the brightness of the bulb? Okay. We can do so by changing some variables that affect the electrical current flowing through the bulb. So what are the variables? Okay, let's see. Yeah. Number one is the number of batteries in series. Now what happens if we increase the number of batteries in series? Now the bulb will become brighter when we arrange more batteries in series in the circuit. Now let's take a look at these two setup. First is A. There is one battery. And in setup B, okay, there are three batteries. So which bulb is brighter, A or B? B, yeah, obviously. Why? Because there are three batteries arranged in series. Now take note, huh? you must write this part here in series because if it is arranged in parallel, so it will be a different story. Yeah? So batteries are arranged in series when the positive terminal of one battery is connected to the negative terminal of another battery. When more batteries are arranged in series, more electrical current flows through the bulb, thus the brightness of the bulb will increase. Okay. Now what about the number of, if we increase unlimited number of batteries, you know, is there a limit or is there a cap to the number of batteries? Can we, you know, increase number of batteries unlimited amount, and then we have a very very bright uh, bulb? Obviously, no, right? There's a limit to number of batteries we can add to a circuit. This is because when too much electrical current flows through the bulb, the filament will melt and the bulb will blow. So this will result a a gap in the circuit. Now, of course, this depends on the type of bulb. Eh? So if you purchase bulb. In the shops, uh, the bulbs comes in different sizes and it comes in different voltage or different capacity. The bigger bulbs, they can, you know, they allow more current to flow through so it becomes brighter. But if you have small bulbs like torch lights, uh, okay, not many, not uh, a lot of current can flow through before it blows. Okay, so it depends a lot also on the type of bulb. But basically, when you increase the number of batteries, the brightness of the bulb will increase up to a a limit that is allowed in the in the bulb. Okay. Now let's take a look at when you arrange the number of bulbs. Now we change the variables now to bulb. Eh? Just now is battery. Now what happens if we increase the number of bulb in series? Okay. Uh, the answer is a little bit opposite from uh, when we increase the number of battery. A bulb becomes less bright when we arrange more bulbs in series. Okay, a bulb becomes less bright when you arrange more bulbs in series. Now let's take a look at these two setup. In setup B, you have three batteries and one bulb. In setup C, you have three batteries also, but two bulbs. Now which bulb is brighter, B or C? Jovan, which bulb is brighter? B or C? Ah, the answer is B, not C. Yeah? Someone says C. So you can see here, if you increase the number of bulbs, all right, the current will be shared between the two bulbs. So the brightness of each bulb will be lesser than in setup B. Okay? So when more bulbs are arranged in series, less electrical current flows through each bulb. Thus, the brightness of each bulb will decrease. All right? Very important. Eh? So, I'll give you a simple example. Eh? Let's say that there is 15 units of electricity 
Okay, given up by the string matrix. This is 15. In setup C, also 15. All right. So this bug B will get the full 15 units of electricity. But in setup C, it has to be shared between the two bugs. So each bug will receive around 7.5, 7.5. Okay, so you can see that the brightness in each bug will decrease. Because why? The current has to be shared with these two bugs in series. Okay? Alright. Ah, now, what happens if you arrange the number of bugs in parallel? Ah, you change the arrangement. Instead of in series, it is in parallel. So, bug can be arranged in parallel in a circuit. You can see here, setup D and setup E. Okay, in setup D, it is in series. In setup E, it is in parallel. Eh? When we arrange more bug in parallel, the same amount of electrical current flows through each bug. Thus, the brightness of each bug remains the same. Okay, the brightness of each bug remains the same. Hence, the number of bugs arranged in parallel does not affect the electrical current flow through the bug. Now, let's say this is uh, 10 units of electricity. Okay, so bug D will receive 10 units of electricity also. Likewise, in setup E, if there is 10 units of electricity given out by the batteries, each will also receive 10. And this will also receive 10. So you can see here the brightness is the same. Even though in setup E, you have two bugs. But because it is arranged in parallel, okay, the brightness between bug D and bug E will be the same. Right? Yes, we can use uh, units. Huh? Uh, at primary school, you do not learn about the, you know, the, how to calculate the current and voltage. And so, in secondary school, you know, you will learn, uh, uh, you learn how to calculate the amount of current electricity flowing. Uh, but in primary school, uh, we just represent it in terms of units of electricity. Okay. Now, bugs in parallel. What is the uh, other advantage of when you arrange bug in parallel? When one of the bug arranged in parallel in a circuit blows, the other bug will continue to light up. So you take a look here. If let's say this bulb is blows, okay. Let's say this bulb blow, right? It blows. So there's a gap, right? So this bulb E will still light up because electricity can can still flow in a parallel circuit, right? Okay. Let's recap. Now the brightness of the bulb in electrical circuit depends on number one, on the number of batteries arranged in series. Number two. The number of bulbs arranged in series. The number of bulbs arranged in parallel in each circuit does not affect the brightness of each bulb. Okay? Alright, so I've come to the end of uh, today's session. So, uh, in the first part, we had a topic on magnets and then electricity. Okay? So, I hope 